Hey there YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be going over every single weapon in Sword Art Online Alicization Licorice and detailing sword skills, damage done, recommendations, and much more. Before I get started, if you find this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel as well as hit that notification bell because we will be doing a lot more videos on SAO as well as other games that come out this year. Now let's get started. So first and foremost you have the sword of course which is what you start out in the beginning. The sword is more of a jack of all trades weapon that can integrate with any build. Damage done by the sword is not low like a dagger but not extremely high like a katana. Now causing hazards is not difficult to accomplish and there are plenty of sword skills that chain together very good with the sword. There are currently 4 passives available for swords which allow you to increase stats overall while the others focus on sacred arts damage and reducing aggro during battle. Now as far as which character or which class you want to put a sword with, what I recommend is that the sword is really more suited for a DPS character and neither a tank nor a healer. All right, so moving on to the dagger. Now, the dagger is actually quite fun to play with and offers players the chance to build a highly mobile and evasive character. The sword skills themselves are extremely fast compared to other weapons and do decent amounts of damage. Of course, these sword skills are closer range than that of a whip or a bow, but using daggers is all about fast, up close, and personal battle. Now, with this being said, the damage is relatively low and being that mobs are already spongy, you will be doing a lot of hits before they are dead, just putting that out there. Sword skills for daggers focus a lot on combination, aerial damage, and speed. The passives are all about crit damage, faster mobility, and of course evasiveness. So anyone that's looking to create a, I guess you would say a roguelike character, should of course be looking into the dagger weapons and skills and builds. Alright, moving on to the rapier. So what makes the rapier special is the sword skill quadruple pain, which has a hit count of 6, which makes it perfect for filling the hazard gauge. Now imagine three other friends tagging along in SAO, and you all consecutively use quadruple pain on a mob. The thought itself isn't insane and surely satisfactory and if any of you have already tried or done so leave a comment below and let me know exactly how euphoric that was now for the rapiers the damage is about the same as swords so it can be used for different builds either healer or dps regarding passive abilities the rapier is all about speed and agility making it great for dps players who find combat in sao a little bit slow next we have the mace now some may argue but i personally believe maces are ideal for tanks only that's it only for tank characters. The damage itself is not that great, the hit count is low, and the speed of course is very low as well. However, the passive skills speak for themselves when I mention that this is for tanks only. First we have leadership which focuses on building aggro for your tank, while spirit of transformation and determination increase your health and iron will increases your defense. Now in addition to this, there are quite a few sword skills that focus on buffing allies similar to a hunting horn from Monster Hunter World if you guys have played that game. If not, I definitely recommend you give it a try. So with that, you do have the option of buffing your party or doing AoEs to hold your aggro. The mace is a must have on one of your allies for SAO, considering that more than likely you're going to be having a tank in your party. Now moving on to whips, whips are another fun weapon in SAO and mainly used on support characters for debuffs against enemy mobs. Damage is not extremely high but up there compared to other weapons and most importantly you have quite a bit of range with a whip as well. For those focused on using their sacred arts more often, the whip is definitely a good choice as well. There are plenty of aerial based sword skills available with the whip or debuff skills as well while passive skills are aimed at health and SP regeneration as well as resistance to enemy debuffs. Moving on to the katana, now next to the great sword, the katana has one of the highest single target damage outputs. So while it is not that great for AoE, using it on bosses is a very good choice. Sword skills such as Sanka output insane amounts of damage while other sword skills either focus on mobility and high raw damage. Passive skills available for the katana focus on increasing attack power, movement speed, and strength. Overall, personally guys, I think that the katana is a fantastic weapon of choice for your main character if you want to focus on DPS as long as you have that tank that's in your party that has a mace and then you have a healer as well. I think that would be a very good build. If you guys have built something like that already, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. I'd be very curious to know. Now moving on to the greatsword and honestly guys, this one is a weird one for me because I expected the damage output to be rather insane, but rather the greatsword is really only good 
for either AoE or counterattacking. The damage is decent, but the hits themselves are rather slow, and overall there isn't much to say about the greatsword besides that it should probably be used for a DPS character when farming certain mobs at once, or a solo player who wants to counterattack and do AoE when fighting multiple mobs. Other than that guys, if you guys have any other suggestions for the greatsword, leave them in the comments below. I really haven't found that much use on it, besides if I'm putting it on another character, like I said, for more AoE damage. Now let's talk about the bow. The bow is probably one of the most slept on weapons that I've seen so far in SAO. You definitely need to give it a try, but it is one of my favorite weapons so far. Not only does it support long range combat of course, but it outputs a considerable amount of damage with its sword skills such as fixed pier, which has 9 hits and outputs some of the highest damage as a sword skill. In addition to this, the bow has a decent amount of sword skills that allow AoE making it perfect for your DPS character. The bow's passive skills focus on evasion, increased experience gained, risk points, and SP regeneration. Now overall guys, like I said before, the bow is probably one of my favorite weapons in the game right now, and overall you should definitely give it a try, especially if you're sick of the swords or the dual swords so far. Now last but not least, we have the classic dual wielding weapons. Dual wielding can only be done with single handed swords, but output very high damage. Unfortunately, there aren't that many sword skills available, with a total of, I believe, there is about seven but if set up right allow for smooth chaining in combat now of course the dual wield is great for skill connects dexterity and chain burst damage making it very ideal for any dps character now guys of course most importantly if you find the right swords the look of the dual wielding looks incredibly epic which of course is the most important things when we're talking about any rpg all right guys so that is the breakdown of each weapon so far in sword art online alicization licorice at the moment, my favorite are the daggers, the bows, and the katana, but if you guys favor differently, comment below and let me know what you prefer and why. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and subscribe to the channel as mentioned before, and as always, I am most active on Twitter, so if you guys want to reach out to me, follow me there, hit me up, feel free to do so whenever you want, etc. I am Cerebro, thanks for watching, enjoy your week, and most importantly guys, keep gaming, I'll see you next time, peace.